Let's take a moment to talk about presets, more specifically creating really useful user presets that you can use as a starting point. So if you would have asked me 10 years ago versus now, my thoughts on presets is that, well, 10 years ago, um, I was pretty, I wouldn't call it obsessed, but I was pretty focused on trying to find the best mixing template, the best tracking template, the best just templates in general, and really trying to hone in on exactly what I wanted to do with a plugin in terms of how I wanted things to be set. And I would spend a lot of time kind of searching for very specific frequencies and things like that. My thoughts now on using presets is basically, I like to just have a good general starting point. Now, what do I mean by this? Okay, well, let's open up a track over here and let's just call this, we'll just call it voice, for example. Um, I have a macro that I've set up, which allows me to basically load an instance of Pro EQ in, its, in my, my own created user default. So let's bring this up. If we take a look at the settings over here, we have uh, some settings in terms of some frequencies that are dialed in. So we got 100 hertz, we have 350, and also whether it is a shelf or a parametric band. And these are just general frequencies that I dialed in, which are some things that I like to turn to when I make my moves. But the basic thing that I would use this for, I use Pro EQ all the time. So anytime if I bring in a sample or let's say I record uh, like a tambourine or a shaker or something like that, I use it as my first stage of processing, which is basically just meant to shape the sound and to get it to sit properly in the track. So the user default preset that I've created is very simple. These frequencies are something that I dialed in. I just chose some arbitrary amounts, but the main thing that I'm doing here is notice that I have a 24 dB per octave filter slope over here. Currently it's set at a really low frequency, so I, I could enable this, but Sometimes you have information down there and sometimes I find that if that this particular filter isn't the best one. So this is enabled and on the top end here, I've got a high cut that's enabled. I mean, if I instantiate it, it's enabled here. But basically what I do is the minute I've recorded my sound, then I open up this macro, which like I said, is super easy to do. And I just peel this back and dial this in and I don't choose a figure like 80 and 70 and always have it be that and never tweak it. It is always going to be, we'll go back to this default, it's always going to be wide open and then the minute I instantiate it, I will just pull back the low end. Okay, I hear it thinning out, then I'll pull it back a bit and then I'll pull back this one over here and this allows me to really easily contour and shape a sound. I mean, I can do this in like three or four seconds and then I'll move on. So I might also do some other moves like this, or maybe I find that I need to pull something out. But generally speaking, having a starting point on the Pro EQ for me that just has those two filters in line at those specific slopes is a really, really good starting point. So that will allow me to shape something. And like I say, I don't need to obsess over really specific frequencies. Now, the other thing to take into account is let's monitor enable this. And I'm just going to switch my monitoring over here so I can hear it. When we work, we tend to work in, in very similar ways once we develop patterns and habits. Now, when I'm tracking, for example, I'm always using, well, most of the time, I'm using a very specific pair of headphones. My monitor is set to the a very specific level in terms of the way I'm monitoring. And I just tend to place vocals at a certain level when I record. And so I'm always kind of working the same way. Truthfully, I don't even look at these levels. I don't really pay attention. I could also look at my inputs. I don't really pay attention to what's happening here. I just know that I work a certain way and I will turn my preamp gain up until things feel right. So the other thing to take into account if you're using things where there's like a um, threshold based, like dynamics plugins and things like that, is we need to have a general idea of the levels that we record at. So let's go ahead and record this. Like I say, this would be, this might be actually a little bit louder than I usually record, but also uh, my voiceover is getting hit with anywhere from like three to five dBs of compression through my RC500. So we have a little bit more RMS. Um, but basically once you have that done, if you were to create presets and you wanted to have a really good starting point, let's for example, take a look at creating a useful user default for the compressor. I'm gonna hop out of record mode here and let's go back to just over here. So 
to my knowledge, I don't have uh, a user default that I've created for this. This is whatever came up with Studio One. Um, if you really want to find out where your presets are and where they're residing, you can right click and show in Finder or show in Explorer, and this will give you an idea as to where they're coming from. But when it comes to, for example, setting something up, okay, so I say to myself, well, these are the general levels that I track at. I would basically just say, like, okay, well, what types of ratios do I like to start off with? You know, do I like to start off with something uh, aggressive, like four to one? Or would I rather do like a two to one? Or maybe like three to one would be a really good compromise. And maybe in terms of knee, I wanted to bring that down a little bit. Let's see now where this setting is sitting. So let's go ahead and record this. Like I say, this would be, this might be actually a little bit louder than I usually record, but also uh, my voiceover is getting hit with. Okay, so it's clamping. Um, well, then we can set up some attack and release settings. But if we always tend to track at a very specific level, then it would make sense to set up a user default that would be kind of like ready to use that. So from this point, it's very simple. Uh, we go over here and we can store as default preset. So we'll click this. Do you want to store? We're going to say yes. Now let's go right click here and let's show in Finder. Notice here that this is in a different folder, right? So I'm just going to go up. Notice that this is in actually my um, user settings. So if we double click, we go into Personas. Each one of the plugins that we have is set up over here. Now, any plugins that or any presets that you've set as a user default, they're going to show up here. So if we go to, for example, Pro EQ, uh, notice over here, this was my user default preset that I set up, and that was created March 19th, 2021. And that is what is being used in this particular instance. So Having the ability to work the same way and having the ability to set stuff that's a useful starting point is, in my opinion, I think it's much more useful than just trying to overthink things. So then I record something and I can basically just pull this compressor up. Let's just hit the Pro EQ for a second, bypass that. So let's go ahead and record this. And then I like say I to say, myself, this okay, be, this might be actually how much a compression do I have? Oh, I want to back I off a little record, bit, but also. And then that's it, you're ready to move on. And if you couple that with things like, for example, we had the Pro EQ, so I could just pull this up and then very quickly. So let's go ahead and record this. Like I say, this would be, this might be actually a little bit louder. And then if I do wanna change the slope, I can also just do things by, you know, using my mouse scroll wheel or whatever. So I can move really, really quickly, but I don't have to obsess over things and I don't have to think about too much. So I think setting user defaults for your most used plugins is a really great idea. Take a limiter into account. If you always tend to work the same way in terms of a reference level when you're producing and mixing, uh, you'll probably find that you can get away with a preset that'll get you 80% there. Maybe you're pushing eight or 10 dB into a limiter in terms of the front end, and maybe you're always hitting like two to three dB of gain reduction, and you typically work in the same genre, so you can have the same settings like fast or normal. So that to me is much more useful in terms of just having a good starting point than it would be to overly obsess about things. Just some food for thought, very easy to create these user default presets. They're a great starting point and you can customize them to how you work. That's it for this video. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.